get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm excited. We have Rick Popowitz, who's one of the top direct response marketers in the health industry. For the past 20 years, Rick has built two highly successful nutritional companies, one of which he sold to the Gold Shield Group, which is a London-based public pharmaceutical company. He's currently founder and CEO of Biocentric Health, which is an Inc. 5000 company. He has launched over 47 new products. He created powerful response and profit-driven direct marketing on and offline, which we're going to hear about. And collectively, his companies have mailed nearly 1 billion pieces and have generated over 35 million phone calls. I have to find out how you even Uh, answered all those calls. He's also co-founder and chairman of the Coalition for Dietary Supplements, which was founded by 30 direct-to-consumer supplement companies to have a voice in Congress on behalf of supplement issues and consumer rights. Rick, thanks for joining me. Well, Dr. Jeremy, it's a pleasure. I, I look forward to today's talk. What I'm really proud of is the fact that we did this with one and a half employees. Now, it doesn't mean that we did it by ourselves. It's not that Kenny Saltzman, the guy who works with me, and myself, we're biocentric. In a sense, we are. But the biocentric is our telemarketers in Auburn, Maine. Biocentric is the fulfillment company that we use in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Biocentric is the manufacturers and the raw material suppliers that we use and the doctors that we use and the web people that we use. You know, so, you know, basically... Um, what it did was it allowed me to um, realize a dream without the responsibilities of a full infrastructure. Right. I just found that fascinating. And more and more people today, more and more entrepreneurs are going that way. I mean, you know, there's something to be said for building the company of 10,000 people. There's something to be said for that company that... Um, like mine, we're we're not a, a huge company by any means, um, but you know we're responsible for paying the salaries through the the our partners in business. I was about to say vendors, but partners in business is better for probably hundreds of people. Yeah, and that's great. So when you look back, Rick, what has been one of the mo- one of the proudest moments? So the proudest moments have nothing to do with anything professional. Yeah. You know, the proudest moments are who you are as a person and what you stand for and what you live. And so, you know, because this is, we won't get into anything personal here. But No, you can. That's fine. But, but this, is, this, is a, this is about business. You know, this is about business. Yeah. So what you do is you say, what are you, what's the code that you want to live your personal life and how that can be impacted? put into your professional life. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a disconnect. Right. You know, all too often we segregate and segment our life yeah. into two things. And, you know, I have a standard and I can do anything over here and then over here I can't do any of that stuff. I want to be one person. You know, I, I, I don't want to be schizophrenic. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, I, I used to have a product that worked for schizophrenics, but anyhow. <laughs> I mean, it could be personal. What, well, what's a personal proud moment? You know, a, a personal proud moment is seeing, you know, our two children who grew up in our house. And, you know, to see them, and I think you're a young father. Yeah. Um, to see, you know, to see your offspring you know, grow up and be respected. And, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, you go through these challenges of life, you know, with your family. And you think, oh, you know, why, how could they do this? They should know better. They grew up, you know. <laughs> my wife and I, you know, we try to set these examples. Right. And then you grow up 
you know, they grow up and you grow up too. And um, you see that the world thinks that they're pretty good. They're decent people. Yeah. And, you know, I have a son who's doing really nicely professional, but more important, he's a, he's a mensch. He's a really good person. Right. And there's not the equivalent word in Yiddish, as far as I know, maybe you do, for, you know, a female. Right. But um, our daughter, she's a teacher. Yeah. And so our son has gone off into the world to try to, you know, do certain things in the music and entertainment industry and, and, so, and to take care of his family well. Yeah. And he's doing nicely in that regard. And our daughter is, is idealistic. And, you know, she's teaching children. And, you know, she's making a contribution. And our daughter-in-law, she's teaching children and making an amazing contribution. And I now have three children. And that's the proudest thing that I have. Right. And my wife. I, I mean, I, I told you this. I've been married for thir almost 34 years and with her for 36 and the fact that she puts up with me, <laughs> you know, and, 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 and a lot of the times it's, you know, I'm, re you know, because I used to say that I'm a perfectionist, but now I'm just in search of excellence, but really I'm just anal. I just want everything to be right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I ask that because, you know, personally, you know, when you have kids, they see you, how you conduct yourself in the professional setting and they've seen the evolution of your businesses and and also how you bring them up so i think it's important to you know talk about those personal proud moments too well thank yeah, you I, yeah. I appreciate that opportunity i, yeah. I want to just say one thing and it relates to how you and i first uh connected yeah um and that was that um someone that we both know you know told you about me and you reached out to me yeah um, and I'm, I'm very appreciative of that, and I'm very appreciative of her. And, you know, I told you one story about my early time at Agora, which I won't go into, but I will tell you something else. And, you know, it's something that my children saw, yeah. and it's something that I've used all through life. And it also goes back to our conversation about employees. So you pay employees, and hopefully you pay them a decent wage, um, and they take that decent wage, and they, you know, they use it to live. Um, and that's perfectly normal. And then for certain people, you offer them bonuses. And bonuses are often characterized in monetary terms. Right, right. You say, if you do X, Y, and Z, or if whatever, you know, metric has been evaluated um, performs, I'll give you X amount of money. But really, money is something that, you know, comes, in, it's very ephemeral. It comes and it goes. And you don't have any recollection. And this one person, she was British, and she loved literature, and British literature, and a British literary magazine. And so as part of her bonus, which was a non, there were two parts of people's bonuses. There was a financial bonus, mm -hmm. and people expected that. I won't say expected it, but appreciated it, understood it, etc. Right. But what was, what was more important, I mean, hopefully for your audience, maybe they'll adapt this is to find out who Jeremy is, mm -hmm. who Rick is, and who Sally is, and the other people who work with them. Find out what's interesting to them, what their hobbies are. Yeah. And say, you know what? You like fishing. You have, the, you have the, your eye on this fishing reel, and it's a bunch of money, and you can't rationalize it. You achieve a certain thing, yeah. I'm going to get you that fishing reel. Right. I'm going to get you this literary magazine. And by doing that, um, someone, if they go fishing, or if they go to their bookcase, or someone comes into the room and goes, look at all those magazines you have. Right. Yeah, I had this crazy boss <laughs> this to me once. Yeah. Rick, I'm glad you mentioned that because that definitely stuck with me since our last conversation and how it it's a, creates a, something that lasts a long time, but it's also a wow factor that you're paying attention to the person, mm -hmm. you know, and it means something to them. Yeah. Well, when I first started professionally, um, there was a book by Tom Peters and another gentleman, um, and I can't remember, Peter or something, you know, Tom Peters and somebody else, I don't remember the other person's name. Anyhow, it, it was called In Search of Excellence, and it was called Management by Wandering Around. Now imagine that I'm 28 years old at this point, 
-hmm. And um, I have um, a, a cohort, a group of, of employees, people that I work with that are young women and a lot of young guys, so young people. And so what I would do is I would spend an hour a day um, and I would walk around the entire place and go talk to people. And often what I would do, because they had you know, chairs and this was a big cavernous area, um, is I, I would give them a ride on their chair. And as I, <laughs> as I physically pushed them around, That's I awesome. asked them questions. And it, it's, you know, I, I think that being normal is boring. Right. I think that you have to step outside the bounds yeah. of, uh, you know, you can't be unprofessional and talk in the way you talk to people or uh, overly personal, right. but you, you basically have to realize that the people that are there doing a certain job, that's only part of who they are. Right. And you get the most out of them if they come to understand you and, and why we're doing something in a vision. Yeah, yeah. Rick, this has been absolutely fantastic hugely valuable. I always love chatting. And like I said, I'll stick by my words before we started, which is this could easily, even though you said, I don't have that much to talk about, this could easily go for four or five hours and I could make this the record interview, which I won't because you'll freeze your butt off. But I appreciate your time. Where should we point people towards to check out online about you, about the company? Well, I have a LinkedIn page mm -hmm. and I have about 500 LinkedIn people. So it's Rick Popowitz and at LinkedIn or something mm -hmm. to that effect. And um, I have biocentrichealth.com, mm -hmm. which is our principal site. Yeah. Then I have about 15 other sites. Okay. So maybe ch check out biocentrichealth.com. Right. What last words, what do we want to leave people with after all this? Um, the direct response um, while sometimes referred to as junk mail, is anything other than junk, and that you should have a lot of pride in what you do, um, and that it can be an absolutely amazing experience. It's something that I've done for uh, roughly 30 years, yeah. and I hope to do it for 30 more. Yeah. Rick, thank you again. It's been, it's been great. Well, thank you so much, Jeremy. You have a wonderful you day. You too. Okay, take care.